everyone, I hope you're well. It's Miss Copper here and today I'm going to be doing a maths lesson on fractions. Now, in this lesson we are going to be counting how many parts of a fraction there is all together. Then we are going to be starting to show some simple fractions and finally we're going to be adding and subtracting fractions with the same denominator. Now all we are going to need for this lesson is a pencil and some paper and you can pause the video at any point if you want to stop and do some working out or jot down any ideas. Now the first learning objective is going to be I can always count up how many parts all together. Now there are three steps that we need to take in order to achieve this learning objective and the first one is that we need to check that the parts are the same size so they're equal. Then we need to count up how many parts of the whole has been divided into and finally we need to say and record what each part will be called. So as you can see here we've got a circle and the first thing that we need to do if you remember is to check that the parts are the same size so that they're all equal. And I can see by looking at this circle that all the parts are in fact the same size. Okay, so now we need to count how many parts the whole has been divided into. So let's do that. I'd like you to count along with me at home. One, two, three, four, and five. So we know that this circle has been, has been divided into five parts. And finally, we need to say and record what each part will be called. So what each part of the shape is going to be called. And for this shape, because there are five parts, it is going to be called, each part, sorry, is going to be called a fifth. So this has been divided into fifths. Okay, now our next one. So the first thing, if you remember, we need to check that the parts are the same size. As you can see, they are in this shape. Then we need to count how many parts the whole has been divided into. So let's do that again. One, two, three, and four. And then we need to say and record what each part will be called. Now this one is a little bit trickier. I know it's been divided into four parts, but this isn't called a fourth. We call this quarters. Okay, and now let's have a look at another one. So like once again, we're going to check the parts of the same size. Count how many, this one's a little bit easier, I think. So we've got one, two, three. And for this one, it is thirds. Okay, so we've had fifths, quarters, and thirds. Now we are going to have a look at how we will write these fractions. We need to think of what the denominator will be. Denominator. Now the denominator is the bottom part of the fraction which shows how many parts there are in the shape. So for example, fifths has five parts. So what do you think the denominator will be in fifths? I think. You are right if you said five. Now same for quarters, we've got four parts, so the denominator will be four. And for the thirds, the shape has been divided into three parts, so the denominator will be three. Okay, now we are going to move on to showing simple fractions. Once again, there are three steps to um, this learning objective. The first is that we need to check the shape has been divided into the correct amount of equal parts. Then we need to check how many parts need shading, and finally, we are going to shade the fraction. Now, so you can join in at home, I've swapped it around a little bit so that I'm going to show you the fraction um, of the parts that has been shaded and you are going to write down the fraction. Okay. So first, we need to check that the shape is divided into the correct amount of equal parts. So for this, it's asking us to shade three fifths. 
So we need to make sure that this shape has been divided into five parts. Let's see. Yes, so we can see that that has been divided into five parts. Then we need to check how many parts need shading. Now to see how many parts need shading, we need to look at the numerator. So the numerator is the top part of the fraction. So we can see that three of the five parts need shading. So we can show this in a variety of different ways. We can show it like this where the first three are shaded, but that's not the only way we can shade it. We can do it like this. Any part of the fractions can be shaded, any part of the fraction can be shaded, it just has to be three parts. Okay, I'd like you to get your pencils ready and we're going to practice our fractions. I'm going to show you the shaded fraction and I would like you to write down the fraction. Okay. What fraction of this shape is shaded? Now remember first that we need to count how many parts they're all together to find the denominator and then to find the numerator, the top number, you need to count how many parts are shaded. So you might need to have a pause, have a think and see what you come up with. Okay, if you said three fifths, you were correct, so well done if you did. So as you can see, this part has one, two, three, four, five equal parts, which is the denominator, and three of those parts are shaded, which is the numerator. Let's have another go. What fraction of this um, shape is shaded? You can pause, have a little think, and write down your answer. If you said two sixths, you would be correct because there are six parts to the shape and two of those parts are shaded. And finally, we have this shape. Do the same thing again. If you need reminding of the steps, you can go back to the previous slides. And this shape has four sevenths shaded because there were seven parts, seven equal parts, and four of them have been shaded in. Okay, now our final part of this lesson is going to be adding and subtracting fractions with the same denominator. So there are four steps in this um, learning objective. The first one is that we need to check that the denominators are the same. So for this you need to make sure that they are the same number. The second step is we need to check that the thing, which in this case is the fraction, is being added or subtracted. Thirdly, you need to use your addition and subtraction learn it. And then finally, you need to find the final amount of fifths, sixths or sevenths, etc. So we're going to start. Remember our first step was to check that the denominators are the same. Remember, our denominators are the numbers that are on the bottom of the fractions. And I can see that both of the denominators are 6. So we can say that this definitely has the same denominators. Secondly, we need to check that the fraction is being added or subtracted. We can see in this case we have got an addition sign, so we know that we are adding these fractions. And then finally, you need to use your addition and subtraction learn it to find the final amount. So in this case, when the denominators are the same, in your answer, the denominator will be the same as well. So we know that six in six, we just need to find out the numerator. So all we need to do is three add two. Have a little quick think, write down your answer. And the answer is 5 sixths. So you can see the denominator has stayed the same and the numerator has been added. Okay, 
Check that the denominators are the same. We can see that they're the same here. Check that if it's been added or subtracted. Well, let's see that we've got a subtraction sign here, so we know that they're being subtracted. And finally, we need to use our addition and subtraction learn it to find the final answer. You can pause the video now, have a little go at doing this and see if you get it right. If you said, or if you wrote down, three sevenths, well done, you would be absolutely right. Because we know that six take away three is three and our denominator stays the same. Let's have a go at some on your own. We're going to have a quick fire round here. Okay. You can pause if you like. Work out the answer. Well done if you got five ninths. And we have got this next one. You can pause, do your working out. Well done if you got the answer 7 twelfths. Remember this time we were subtracting. Okay. Next question, pause, have a go at working it out. Well done if you got 10 elevenths. Next one. Well done. If you got 13 fifteenths. Well, well done for completing today's lesson. I now have an extra challenge for you at home. I would like you to see if you can find fractions of a whole in items at home and count how many parts there are. This may be in things like pizza or cake or anything else you can find at home. So, thank you for joining our lesson today.